Welcome to this video quantum conversation. I'm Loren Gailey, and today we are receiving divine frequencies. These are frequencies that connect us to who we truly are. And my guest today is working diligently on our beloved planet to bring this whole process about. She is a leader in the evolution of consciousness and Danielle Rama Hoffman is here with the Council of Light and Thoth. Danielle, thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. Welcome back to the show. Mm, thank you for having me. I'm so excited. I love you, love your show. So happy to be here. Thank you. We are really looking forward to this divine transmission. We're going to experience these frequencies and light language. Before we start, though, can you share this deep connection with Thoth? Who is Thoth? Many people are familiar with him, with his role in Atlantis and Egypt. But now he's been working closely with you for many years now. So share with us who he is and how you established or reestablished this connection with him. Yeah, so Thoth uh, or Toth, t many people say his name in different ways. I learned Thoth, and then when he started coming through in the divine transmissions, he said Toth uh, is in the Egyptian gods, the god of infinite knowledge, the keeper of the Akashic records associated with architecture, scribing, communication, and uh, as you mentioned, also in Atlantis, um, Hermes, and really connected to so many things. And so for me, my primary reconnection with Toth happened really in beginning in 1996. And then I received transmission into the lineage of Toth uh, through Nikki Scully. I think it was in 2002. And for me at that point, I really had this evolution or this shift from uh, teaching others work to really having a divine partnership with him and bringing in bodies of work directly from source through my connection with him. And so that's, uh, we've spoken about before, the, the books, the tablets of light, the temples of light, the council of light. And uh yeah, his role is very expansive and for me has been a beautiful access point to infinite knowledge. And uh, there are many areas of ascended mastery that he focuses on and plays with and supports others to remember. So he's associated with Tarot and the Emerald Tablets, divination, uh, healing, like I said, sacred architecture. So there's a lot there. And then in animal form, uh, he's often shown as the blue heron or the ibis. I know one time I wrote down like a thousand things I love about Toph, so I could keep going, going, going. <laughs> so it's been nearly like two decades, almost 22 years since you really first were initiated with Toth. And you do a lot of high level work and you do a lot of one-on-one -on -one work with mm, clients, let's say, and people so the people who are experiencing the work with Toth and, and his teachings through you, how have you seen their lives change? Have they come online more fully? Well, it's a beautiful question that really brings me to one of the key things that I've experienced and grown into and have seen with so many others as well who connect with Toth is really this evolution into divine partnership from the place of equality or equanimity and that there really is this forging of partnership between us incarnate uh, light beings incarnate and then also light beings and light 
And so for me personally, and one of the key messages and arenas that Toth and the Council of Light bring forward really is this point about equality and evolving out of the old paradigm of power over and power under into revolutionizing relationships and recognizing that we really are all equal. And so I know for me in the <clears throat> excuse me, in the divine transmissions, there, that really is so clear and vibrant and vital that we connect on this 50 yard line and that it's, it's so beautifully and eloquently experienced. And so I think that's one of the a thousand things that I love about connecting with Toth and I see in a really imp important and potent way in others' lives, because that is, an evolution in consciousness from thinking that there's somebody outside of us that knows it's better from for us than we do, or that we need an intercessor or a priest or a psychic or whatever to access consciousness to really being in direct partnership from the recognition that we each have our part of the sequence and we come together to co-create. So that's one of the things that comes to top top of mind because usually in separation consciousness or the old paradigm there's some of that dynamic in place where we're either thinking we're less than or more than or that going into the echoes of being the victim or thinking that if we're in our power and potency then then we're going to be in that role of the the victimizer to really just recognizing that that's an illusion and and to practice that so i feel like with the team and Toth and the Council of Light, there's this beautiful practice of being in that equality, that, that leader to leader, uh, being of light to being of light, divine to divine. So that's one of the things, yeah. What a beautiful time to really bring forth this message as well. We know that there's these energies on the planet that are really shifting things really stirring up the pot. We see the old systems collapsing and that could make some really nervous or worried, but it's actually a greater call to connect in a much deeper way to the multiverse and to these energies. So it's almost as if there's solution energy. It's almost an empowerment energy when we're able to uh, feel it this way. So share with us what's really going on with these divine transmissions. It's as if the veils are very thin right now and we're able to feel palpable frequencies, palpable frequencies of love. It's almost like in, on one hand we could feel very much the frequencies of love or um, elatedness or bliss. And then the very next moment we could be back into a 3D program that needs to be released. Can you share a little bit about the energies that are available to us and how it's really assisting us in getting out of these lower densities? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, as the topic of this particular quantum conversation is divine expansion uh, with the support of light language, that there really is the recognition of one way to provide a context for what's happening is that the divine or source, God, goddess, great spirit, all that there is, is in this always in this process of expanding and that we as divine multidimensional beings of light are also in this process of process of expansion. So this can be a new way of uh, awareness or thinking from thinking, okay, the divine is done, perfect, whole, and complete, to recognizing that the divine is also expanding. And that one of the ways that the divine expanded during different evolutions in consciousness was through separation. And part of the ticket that most of us had in incarnating when we were born was this divine forgetting or incarnating in a period of being separate from source or that illusion. And then now the energies 
are very much in uh, unity consciousness and we're recalibrating to that. So it's natural that the separation comes up, that as we move into higher frequencies, that the slower vibrations come up to be included into the wholeness, into the oneness. And yet for me, that was really a shift that happened to focus on the divine expansion. A lot of the work that I've been up to and others have been up to is really like not only how can we contribute to one another and to groups and to the earth star, yet also to the multiverse, to the, the divine verse, to source consciousness directly. And what is it that we're up to now that in 700 lifetimes from now is really being calibrated. So what really expands the divine in this now moment is also different than it was five years ago or 20 years ago. And that's what you're talking about as well. And that the more moments that we are in our multidimensional self connected to our totality, which also includes the slower vibrations then that can also be the way that the divine, the divine expands. And there's this also expanded council flight. So a lot of the team has gotten even more intergalactic and bringing in frequencies and vibrations that we require that haven't been on the earth star before. So when you talk about those systems breaking down, it's like they were what used to work doesn't work so much. And, and we're really being invited to lean into what it is that we each carry, what we know that may not be here and then calling in those frequencies and vibrations from the earth star that we, that, that are bespoke to us. So that's a little snippet of a, a larger context and to me, that's also really exciting in that we're shifting into this individualized oneness out of the tribal consciousness, one size fits all, all energies work for everyone to recognize that what, what energies and frequencies work with my system may not be exactly the same as yours. And, and rather than those canceling each other out uh, or different frequencies and vibrations canceling, canceling each other out in duality, now that we're more multidimensional, very, very, very different frequencies can seem to coexist just like the sun and the moon and the earth and the stars and Jupiter all exist in the same solar system. So that to me is really exciting. Well, it's very interesting here. Yes, uh, the unity consciousness that we're moving into, and you mentioned that we connect with the earth star that's really important to really be grounded here in this plane as we expand into this divine consciousness. You also mentioned the intergalactic frequencies. This is the love of the cosmos coming in to support us. Yes, and, and that really was a part of my evolution as well, is that there was this time that I was very much connected to Egypt and going to Egypt and uh, that a lot of what it, I saw in Egypt, like the temples along the Nile were built in reflection to the Milky Way. So this cosmic connection as above, so below, as within, so without, as, it, as it's described in the Emerald Tablets, that there really is this what's happening on the earth star and then also this uh, divine verse, multiverse, cosmic correlation. And that there is even more of the possibility to partner with intergalactic beings or beings of light across the multiverse. And some of the team that's come forward also with me that works with Toth and through divine transmissions often will have a particular purpose. So there was the general quote unquote general council of light that I worked with to bring in the council of light book and manifesting the deepest desires of your soul that had a lot, a lot of different representatives and that we each have our own individual cosmic uh, council of light and then more recently, there's been the path of the Venus light beings of light that have come forward to really support each of us being in our divine genius. So they often talk about like if we're the strawberry, we're the most sun ripened, succulent, juiciest, undiluted strawberry possible. 
and that from their perspective, they don't really understand how we would hold back or be shy or hide our, our light and our gifts and talents. So that's also an example that an individual may have a, a particular cosmic connection that some may think of like being a star seed or having an origin or having off planet lifetimes that now there's even greater communication with those particular intergalactic frequencies or light language frequencies so that then there can be an even greater sense of feeling at home on the earth star because there's unity with the frequencies and vibrations. So circling back to your question of what do I see the benefits of those that connect with Toth and, and on this path of evolution and consciousness, one is really much uh, living more multidimensional mul in multidimensional way and from divine wholeness and that also speaks about the languages of light and that there are many languages of light, not only the spoken light languages, but also shapes and colors and numbers and sacred geometries. So there's much more interdimensional communication or multidimensional communication that's happening, that the Earth Star, from my perspective, has jumped dimensions to not only be in her solar system, immediate solar system, but more freely interconnected with different frequencies and vibrations from across the galaxies. And this is a real shift for me too, because I was very much in Egypt and then it was kind of like, well, what was before? And, uh, and then it got very galactic at one point. <laughs> yes. Okay. That's very interesting. I know there's a lot of reports of people feeling very connected to their galactic family and you mentioned uh, light language. There has been an extraordinary number of people suddenly speaking light language. We have reports of people seeing the sacred geometries in their vision in the third eye. And that's precisely what you're talking about. So before we go into a divine transmission and a channeled message from you, can you talk just a little bit more about the light language and how we allow it to come forth? It is for some skeptics, let's say they may just be totally freaked out by what they begin to speak. I mean, we could sit here and think that it's just make believe, but there's something more to it. It is our multidimensionality and how do we allow it? How do we get ourselves out of the way and just allow it to come forth, whether it be through toning Mm -hmm. singing, light language, or even drawing. I know there's a lot of really cool drawing and, and, and shapes. Yes, beautiful. Well, what comes to me to share about that is also really talking about the Ascended Mastery lineage of Toth or the different, different prongs of infinite knowledge and that they're scribing, for example, as an ascended mastery with Toth. And as we first look at scribing, what comes to mind is really writing and the written wor word. And that scribing can also be that which is happening uh, telepathically or through meditation, through speaking, through writing, that it's not always the written word. And... And as I have deepened into being a scribe and also supporting others in their scribing, that part of what's come through about what scribing is, is that it is bringing something forward that's still connected into divine, to divine wholeness. So in this individualized oneness, that there are words that we choose. So if I write a book, for example, that the words that are in the book, or I scribe a book, or I divinely transmit, I really channel the books, that they're out of all the infinite possibilities of words, there are specific words that are in that book. Yet those words are multidimensional. They're not just two-dimensional. So they're still connected to divine wholeness and the multi-dimensions. And so that when somebody is in the environment of a scribed text, for example, or a scribed uh, verbal 
or even a um, telepathic conversation, there's a sense of the multi-dimensions there. So there's the words that are placeholders, and then there's the energies, the frequencies, all that's happening, that we are always multi-dimensionally communicating. We're receiving and transmitting all at once. And so to me, light language is another example of scribing where there are certain syllables that also go beyond the words. Because even in, with the words, as they're scribed in wholeness and as someone's engaged with a scribed text and they may experience like energy that they feel in their body or, or different, uh, different frequencies and vibrations that I, I've heard that a lot from, from individuals. And so these different multidimensional layers of a scribe text. And for me, the first time I spoke light language was like, I don't know, before anyone was really talking about it, maybe 15 or a long time ago, it seemed like years ago. And there was a woman who was speaking light language and, and she supported me to speak light language. And then I didn't speak it for years. It was just like in the background. And then it just started coming forward. And I noticed it would come forward as a way to also bypass the mind, to really also be placeholders for the, the divine wholeness or the multidimensional consciousness. And, and I've noticed too, that there are, it's just happening more spontaneously, where individuals are just remembering and being around others who are speaking light language, it's like communicating to the multidimensional self. And then there's this remembering process that happens. So sometimes when I'm with others that are choosing to experience more light language or as a part of the special offer as well, there's a, there's a lot of light language in it that as somebody's trying it out and, they, and they're choosing to speak it, one of the things that, that can get that started is if I'm speaking light language, to repeat like the last syllable to kind of get started and to just have fun with it. Even if we are seemingly making it up out of the millions of possibilities, why are we using those syllables? And that the light language can also be happening on the nonverbal planes. And like you talked about the sacred geometry. So to me, uh, it's a language of light that circles back as well to the hieroglyphs that the hieroglyphs weren't just symbols. They, like, they weren't just like letters of the alphabet combined. They're multidimensional. There's a sound, there's a nuances to the language. So it's also resurrecting a more multidimensional language of light that we as light beings incarnate or multidimensional beings naturally are speaking. So we may still speak of these words, and yet there is a whole conversation that's happening with everybody that's a part of this conversation that's happening in at the speed of light and in the sound and frequency realm. So I know it's weird and strange, and it can bring up the resistance and like, oh, am I crazy? What is that? And and yet that's also just uh, part of the fun and part of the joy of just uh, exploring it and that it's not for everyone. Um, and, and yet it can also really be a way to express some 2000 words in one syllable. So I also find it really efficient and effective. Beautiful. It's really an activation. And like you said, it's a remembrance of something uh, in our multidimensionality. So that's really interesting. Thank you for sharing on that. I know many do want to just begin speaking it and sharing it. So it's good to see that you have that process for them to begin to do that. And then to speak with others too. I know that's always been really fun to see people sharing conversation in light language. The 3D mind, the human ego mind will look at it and criticize it. But when we feel into it, we are activated in it. We can feel that energy and that vibration and the activation from it. So that's beautiful. So let's bring in a divine transmission so we can experience this multiverse and these frequencies, this returning to divine wholeness. Yes, beautiful. So as I'm connecting to bring in the team, just inviting everyone to connect to yourself, your signature energy, 
and your unique Council of Light if you choose. And this is Toth with Sanat Kamara, the Tri, and an expanded Council of Light that are moving more into the forefront of this divine transmission. We are delighted to be co-creating this conversation. And that is where we would begin this divine transmission, to honor the co-creation of this conversation, that it is happening from our multi-dimensional communication that you are bringing forward your contribution, you are transmitting that which you would like for this conversation to address. You are transmitting your wisdom, your gifts, your talents, and you're also receiving that which would be most optimal. So as we are looking at the group, and the co-creation of that which is being transmitted and had and received, because just like the breath of the inhalation, the having and the exhalation being one cycle, there's a simultaneity of gifting and receiving and having, and that this is also a revolution in co-creation and an acknowledgement that there is this shift as well to there not being a handful of leaders that are really on the leading wave of this evolution in consciousness that you each have a leading role in the evolution in consciousness and that also bringing in your questions, your recognition, your awareness, your gifts, your talents, the slower vibrations, all of it, that that also creates rocket fuel for the larger evolution in consciousness. So our first glance, and we also are having this conversation from the altar of the 50-yard line or acknowledging your free will and conscious choice, that uh, what comes through is coming through because it's in response to your asking and your calling. The first glance of the group is to really acknowledge that this conversation is co-created and that that is also a shift of what communication looks like or was usually associated with. That usually communication was associated with there being two individuals in a room together at the same time, or that there's a time and a space associated with it. Yet multidimensional communication is beyond time and space. So we can be communicating whether you're verbally saying anything or not, whether you're tuning in at the same time as somebody else is or not, it's beyond all that. So that's where we would begin. And we're delighted to go in any direction that you're called, if there are any questions or uh, directions that you would invite our co-creation to go within. So thank you. Thank you and welcome to this very special sacred sp space. It's beautiful to hear those words. It is so comforting. What are some of the tools, or let's call them practices or procedures or strategies to connect, to show up? Do we need to show up at a regular time, a regular place? in our daily meditation, how can we really begin to cultivate this connection with you more and to feel it more and to trust in that? Mm. Yeah, so as there is the divine expansion project and now this is the try that is bringing forward more frequencies and vibration to support the divine expansion, there's really the honoring of the individual and what is optimal or bespoke for one individual is unique to, to you. And so 
we would begin by also inviting a wider bandwidth, for example, or a greater freedom to be following the inner calling or the inner guidance that we know that there may have been different um, tools that you've picked up along the line, along the way that have been optimal for a time, and yet then continuing to bring them forward may feel as if they're creating less space than more space. And so we would, rather than having specific guidelines of a certain time a day or those kinds of things, because those really come from the individual's preference and the individual's knowing and calling, to really be perhaps recognizing the synchronicities that exist in all now moments or being present with who it is that you've become. And whatever you can do or be to recognize that you're different in this now moment than you were in a previous now moment. So there's also the solar ray, which is the now ray that's coming forward to really invite you to be current with who it is that you've become. So we know that was a non-answer answer. And we would also add in a bit of light language if it seems as if it's time to specifically anywhere that you may have a construct that you've picked up as a part of your spirituality or a part of your evolution that now is creating a sense of imprisonment or being shackled or tied down, that that can be included back in the oneness, back in the wholeness, back in the source from which it came. So as we talk about that, is there anything more that you would add or that you've seen about what we're talking about? Like maybe somebody has a diet that really worked for them at one point and then it doesn't anymore. Yet in order to be on a spiritual path, it seems like they have to keep that diet. Do you have a sense of what we're getting at to complete here? Yes, absolutely. One of the hot topics is that there are many ways to go about this ascension. And there are many way showers who offer advice and suggestions to really empower us. But at the same time, um, we shall not feel guilty about certain things that we do in our lives to um, make ourselves comfortable or enjoy things. I guess what I'm saying is we don't have to beat ourselves up if we're not following a specific protocol. So there's many ways to ascend. Um, and I love what you said about following the inner guidance and increasing that bandwidth. And one thing that I see coming up is you mentioned there's, it's like no more hiding anymore. We really are feeling this call to step forward and, and to bring our gifts forward. But there's a little residue of fear over this. So perhaps that could be something that the frequencies that you offer to, to really get rid of those constructs of fear or the shyness that we might have or this wanting to hide because now that the hiding is over. It feels like right now there's a level of transparency coming forward that we all are feeling. I mean, on the collective and individually. So I would just say, getting over these these fears and this hesitation to really express our divine uniqueness. Mm -hmm. Yes, and as we're talking, there's a sense of co-creating a, a light language code or a light language sequence that would have different parts of the code. So just as like perhaps in a briefcase that has six numbers to open it, that those of you that are tuning in, that you have a part of the numbers, we have a part of the numbers, and then we're opening up greater possibilities. And so the code is part to be completing or bringing back in the wholeness or back in the oneness, any structures that we've out, that they have gotten outgrown, that you've outgrown, that have gotten outdated, that seem as if they're a self-created imprisonment or as you're talking about a code to really also be honoring and including that at one point the shyness 
and the holding back that was what expanded the divine yet now sharing and shining is what will expand the divine even more so it's a little bit like a recipe that we have a sense that we're gathering the different ingredients to the light code transmissions that will come through and that are already happening in the nonverbal space to really unlo unlock that. And so we would call in the energy of desire and to ask each of you to really tune in if you could have anything out of this conversation right here, right now, not your ascension later, not five years from now, or yet right now, what would that be and where would we go and what we would address if this conversation was one you look back on and it really was one that was a quantum evolutionary effect what would get unlocked what would you bring forward and to us to circle back as well to what you shared earlier that we would focus more on environments and to follow the energy, if there was one tool or tip we would give, is to invite each of you to follow the energy to look at what environments really seem to be ones that cultivate or call you forward to show up even more, to come to that divine partnership or divine matching. So that, as you asked Danielle earlier, what is it that she's noticed for herself and others that have connected to us? Uh, what she was sharing about the, the environment based on equality and co-creating. And also really, rather than this being seven steps to ascension, as we're with you, divine to divine, light being to light being, then you're with yourself in a greater multidimensional way. And that's an environment that encourages new pathways, new ways of being, uh, bringing forward that if you're a pineapple, you're the juiciest, most pineapple, pineapple-y, and there's not any of also seeing that we often see this, this is also something we'd say, that when an individual has a divine capacity that really is unique and is one that hasn't been fully consecrated on the earth star because this conversation is about what's expanding the divine and that means leaning into the innovation leaning into what's not here yet so when you have a divine capacity that you don't recognize and you don't look around you look around you see somebody else nobody else is doing it or being it then there can be this sense that there's something wrong with you, or there can be a desire to have a divine capacity that you see somebody else having that actually is a less um, fully realized divine capacity than the one that you have. Now, it's not saying that their divine capacity is more or less than yours, yet for them, it may be the full realization. For you, it's not. So that would show up in comparison as we're making our laundry list or ingredient list of what gets completed it can also show up as comparison or thinking that uh, if you're around somebody and they're clairvoyant, they can see and you see nothing that that's better than, than what it is that you do naturally. And maybe, you know, so we're also inviting you to look for, follow the energy of environments that support you in accessing more of what it is that you have inside and more of what you know to be and that that environment encourages more of your way that it's not our way or somebody else's way we may spark something we may be a part of that environment yet it always brings you back to what it is that you know inside and more of what it is that you know inside yes that's very powerful in fact we were just talking about that recently and we reserve the right to listen to our own inner guidance. So we have way showers over here that kind of show us the way, but what you're saying is really, it's our own inner knowingness, this divine expansion, it happens within, and it's our inner knowingness, our connectedness that gives us this answer. Yes, and that there's also that which you described that may be experienced of self and then other like the self as way shower and then another that's a way shower and the inner guidance as well happening from the multi-dimensional or divine you that 
There may be an aspect of you on the ninth dimension that has clarity or guidance or wisdom that uh, you're including or multidimensionally communicating to what's often spoken about as the higher self or how you would perhaps in your incarnated experience know what that guidance is and then it creates a much more fluid or multidimensional way of living and that that can be quite efficient expansive exciting and that co-creation of it is is co-creating even more within yourself so we would invite each of you to really place on the altar in response to your asking and calling and in response to our asking and calling what is it that you would choose in this transmission and at this time and that you're asking your multidimensional self that we're being with you in your totality and then we would stream some light language and some energy for that in particular and before we go into that is there anything else that you would add or ask as a key that unlocks even more that's possible it would simply center around our multi-dimensionality and being aware of all those aspects those other aspects of, of us being in other frequencies and really just becoming aware of our multidimensionality on a greater level. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so that can be like a zipper that has individual teeth and then you zip them all up into oneness that rather than bouncing from the filters of the body and then the mo emotions and then the mind, there's an experience of the multidimensional self, all in oneness, all in wholeness. Mm. Beautiful. Okay. Just feeling into that, it's, it's quite exquisite. It just feels expansive and, and beautiful. Can we experience light language, maybe an activation here? I know it would be extraordinary to hear that. Yes, yes. So here we go. And there's more beings of light that are coming forward, including some fifth dimensional whales, dolphins, felines, and the emerald beings of light that really support you and being you, nothing more, nothing less. And we would honor that you are the signature energy that unlocks what's yours to be and do and have, <clears throat> nothing more, nothing less. Inkatayanka, o soya tinangaya, i saya toyanka tinanya, ayanka shi tinania. So we are speaking some languages of light and also transmitting through the hands and the eyes and in the silence or in the multidimensional conversation, some light language sacred geometry. Now, there is the aspect of this light language transmission that is being divinely transmitted through your divine transmitter, Danielle, through us. And then there's also the aspect of this light language transmission that you are transmitting. And so we are honoring the larger transmission, all coming together in one divine wholeness to expand source consciousness. So here's the light code to really complete that shyness or that holding back. So here we go. Ina naya tayanka. Boy sakayanki tayo noya. Ea kampoya si tina nanyan koya. He satayankan yankaya poya tina nanyan kaya. 
I ka toi am poi an ka shi wa noi si an ka ti na noi an ka ni an ka an ka ya. I ka tai o poi sai an ki na na ni an ka an ko ya. And here's a little bit of the translation. You are one of one. Hai an ko ya pa ya. If you are a strawberry, be that strawberry. Han ka ti na na ni an moi an ka ya. If you are an artichoke, be that artichoke. If you are not fruit or vegetable, yet something that you haven't seen categorized thus far, be that. You do not need a category or a structure outside of you to know who it is that you are. You are who it is that you are. Inviting you to fall back in the oneness and the wholeness, anything from the tribal consciousness that you bought that's outdated and no longer yours that says it's not safe for you to be fully you. If you choose, it is a choice. So here is the light language code we would put on the altar for that. Now, inviting you to turn up the volume of your ripeness, your undiluted self. And this is more from the path of the Venus light beings of light. Oyasa ikotina niya. O soya soya. Isoyankaya. O so tina noya moya. O so poyasa. Oya ninkuya. Iyasa. Oyasa. Ikatina nanya koya. So that has been a particular shackle that we've brought back into the oneness or invited you to bring back in the oneness. And we would do a broad sweep of any other imprisonments, shackles, structures you have in place that you've outgrown. So you know what those are and it's your choice to complete them or not. Yet here's some light language codes to help with that process if you choose. Ikantanandaya nui i soya oyanka ikanti wasaya ayanka tinanya kayo poyasia iyanka siti wakaya oikati nananya kaya. And now there is some frequencies and vibrations from the tri that are very crystalline in nature to focus on if you're not flipping back and forth between your body, your mind, your emotions, then you're coming from divine wholeness into divine wholeness. And so more of those energies and frequencies that are spoke to you, that you're calling forth, that you're asking. And so put up the call for those if you choose. What is it that you require that hasn't been on the earth star thus far that now is becoming available through this transmission? What is it that you have access to that only you have access to and bringing that forward into this now moment if you choose. So here are some sacred sounds from the crystalline uh, sound language of light from the tri. And this is a citrine and emerald combination.
And as we ask for there to be this amplification of desire, we would go through some rapid reading of a light language text to address what you've placed on the altar. And so this is an example of light language being simultaneously efficient and expansive, that it's not necessarily lasting for lots and lots of minutes, yet a way to get a lot done. And always asking what's yours to be and do and have, nothing more, nothing less, with ease and grace for all levels of your system. And so this is taken from the book of the Path of the Venus Light Beings about really being you fully sharing your brilliance and your gifts without any hesitation or holding back. And this is from the try and the crystal consciousness about how to expand as a divine multidimensional being of light. And this is from and for the bliss of it, more of those, the joy along the way, the bliss along the way. So a combination of the Hattors and the Ta that are cousins of the Hattors uh, and the uh, Council of Light to enhance the frequency and vibration of joy along the way. And you may focus on the color of hot pink anywhere that you're taking all this serious to bring in more joy. particular light language stream of consciousness is an example of how different dimensions of you may be asking for different palettes of energy all in the same now moment. And even though from the old paradigm, there may be a perspective that having a lot of different frequencies and vibrations in a now moment can be overwhelming. From our perspective, you're most likely sensing that it's actually exactly what you're asking for, that your system knows what to do with it because you're not trying to bring it all in to a thimble, an ocean's amount in a thimble. You're bringing it in in a much more multidimensional aspect. So you in a higher dimension may have really been asking for that hot pink energy and that joy energy, that lightness. And another dimension of you was asking for 
the energy, the crystalline energies from the try to really be expanding as the divine being. And another aspect of you is asking for these completion codes to really bring any hiding or fear back into oneness. And that's bespoke living. That's living as individualized oneness, multidimensional that you don't have to settle for a frequency and a vibration that's kind of like the one you're asking for. You can really have it exactly what it is that you're asking for. And that's the other aspect of this resurrection of divine wholeness, that all that there is exists in each and every now moment. So even as we bring forward a word or a light language sigil or symbol, then within that word exists all that there is. And you can access all that there is in each and every now moment and take from it that which is yours to be and do and have nothing more and nothing less. So as we're moving towards a place of completion of that light language transmission, inviting you each to really be in an integration focus that you can easily absorb what's yours and just like the body eliminates vitamin C, if you have too much, anything that's not yours, you just don't pick up from the altar. And that's where your choice comes in. So that would be the last piece. What are you choosing? What are you choosing? What are you choosing now? 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 What's your multidimensional choice? How are you choosing to contribute to the divine expansion? How are you expanding as a divine being? And how is your choice a key role in that? Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for that. Wow, I hope that everyone watching and listening to this truly felt what was going on in their own field. This was it was palpable. Every facet of that transmission touched me totally differently. The joy one, there was a little bit of sadness there that was released. So that was really beautiful. Danielle and, and the council and, and Toth always, always assist in the shift in vibration. And I know many are still integrating there was a moment in this in the beginning with with the hands your hands that were moving it was almost like i could see your multi-dimensionality i could see a galactic being that you are it was almost like your face shifted that was really mm -hmm. exquisite so let's talk a little bit here before we wrap up our our conversation about some of the symptoms that we can experience and when we're expanding our divine consciousness or our divineness. Some have reported dizziness. Is this common dizziness, lethargy, wanting to go to sleep? Can you share a little bit on, on this integration and the symptoms that we may experience? Mm -hmm. Yes, and we like to call them adaptation sensations. And that as you are in this evolutionary process of ascension, descension, ascension, descension, in oneness as a spiral, there is a complete recalibration of the system and, and the grids. That ley lines, for example, that used to be horizontal and vertical now become holographic or, or spiral. So in that process, there's a simultaneity of including back in the wholeness, back in the oneness, back in the source from which it came, which we've spoken about, that rather than releasing it, there's really an inclusion of it because those slower vibrations are rocket fuel for the evolution and consciousness. So you may have the experiences of identities or old ways of being disintegrating that may create those adaptation sensations that you're speaking about that the physical body may be broadcasting. And then there's also really leaning into that which is, um, that which is coming. And that's really where we would, as we're tuning into this particular group in this now moment, 
that a lot of those adaptation sensations or the slower vibrations or what we like to speak about as the duck, sh the deck of cards shuffling, that you may notice you're tired, you may have a headache, you feel dizzy, there's yawning, there's uh, whatever it is, that that's like the deck of cards that's shuffling. And as much as you can just let it shuffle through, you notice it, yet it most likely isn't the deck that you're going to be playing with. So from our perspective, there's also a shift from, and this is what we have is, is that a sense that's underneath the question, of rather than looking at what's wrong with an adaptation sensation, really asking, well, how is this contributing? How is this a part of the whole? How is this just simply energy that's moving out? What if I put my attention on what's coming in? What else is possible? What are the deck, the cards that I'm actually playing with? That these can all be questions. And not to say that they, the adaptation sensations won't continue, yet from our perspective, you experience the majority of them already in separation consciousness from the density levels. And now as you're becoming more multidimensional, you can be aware of them yet from a larger part of the wholeness. So we would just wrap up this, this with an analogy, which is let's say you have a headache or you have a, a fever and that headache or that fever is like 1% of your total makeup of your health. And yet you don't notice the other 90% or 99% that's in radiant health. And that now as you're becoming more multidimensional, you can notice the headache or the fever as a part of repositioning you. A fever is supporting your body. And at the same time, you're noticing the other 99% of the body that's in radiant health. And to exaggerate that or overflow that rather into not only noticing the adaptation sensations in your body or in your body or in your body, yet also the emotions, the mind, and then on the multidimensional level. So sometimes you'll flash back or your body will ask for more to circle back so that all of you is going, it's ascension, descension, ascension, all of you is going in oneness and in wholeness. So we know we said we would complete with a knowledge, one analogy, but we would just add one more thing, that there is also a shift from looking at what's going wrong or what's wrong, what's wrong, what's wrong, what's wrong, which is a part of survival consciousness. In order to survive, there was a hypervigilance of what's wrong to now noticing or including whatever is happening as a part of the larger picture or a part of the wholeness. So it's not being addressed from a filter of looking for what's wrong, yet from the filter of all is well, now what? Now we're not saying ignore what's going on because it is whether you try to ignore it or not, we know that that was happening a lot with the wave of, of uh, the law of attraction, that some would not speak anything negative, yet they were vibrating a slower vibration. We don't mean to ignore anything, yet to include it. You feel your anger, you feel your body, you feel your toes wiggling in your shoes. There's a headache there's a delight, there's a much larger picture. So you take that 1% of food coloring that was in the thimble of water and you place it in the ocean of oneness. It's still there, yet it's included from a much more unified field and a much larger multidimensional vantage point. So that was a lot and a little streamline, yet we would just ask, each of you to pick up from that what's yours and to uh, leave the rest. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It is very comforting to hear those words and it brings relief and it gives us a sense of focus on the rightness of us. I want to thank the council. I want to thank Toth and Sanat Kumara, beautiful beings, 
being voiced through Danielle. Thank you. Yes. And we are extending our acknowledgement and appreciation to you and this environment that you have co-created with so many and are continuing to co-create and to everyone tuning in. All is light and we are all. Hmm. Yeah. This is Danielle that's moving more into the forefront. Exciting. I know my vibration is not the only one that has shifted here. That was so exquisite and so comforting and palpable in a way that I really, truly hope everyone could experience and feel. Danielle, thank you. Do you go, do you just step aside and are you still able to understand or hear and, and perceive the message? Mm, yeah, you're welcome. For me, it is like uh, being a river bank that the river flows through. Like I have an experience of the river flowing through and there are aspects that I remember and, and sooner the better. So I'll be more aware now of what came through than, you know, tomorrow or the next day. And one thing that does stand out for me from the transmission was really like how we're asking for a variety of things at once and that we can have all of that vibrationally on many different levels in a way that's not overwhelming, yet actually sometimes more is, is uh, what we're asking for, that, that the joy that came in can come into some dimension, another aspect of us is asking for something else. And I think that um, was really a, a unique and cool way. I hadn't heard them speak about it in that way before, of the bespokeness of the frequencies and vibrations that we're asking for. Yeah, beautiful. It seriously moved me to tears. It was it was exquisite. It was really exquisite. Okay, so we are almost out of time in our conversation here, but I want to just give you a moment to share an opportunity for all who are watching and listening. And this is all in a special offer that you've got available. So this will really help people on their path. Share with us a little bit of what's included here. Yes, yeah, so this is a light language special offer that's called Align with Your Divine Frequencies with the uh, Thoth, Toth, and the Languages of Light. And, uh, and it's really a, a cornucopia of different light language transmissions. And um, so not, a, not specifically a class to learn light language, although that may spontaneously happen as the light language codes are, are transmitted, then you're invited to also be transmitting or toning or having light language come through at the same time. So one aspect of this special offer is seven keys to dial into your divine frequencies. And uh, this is seven, 10, 10 plus minutes of light language transmission. So just like we experienced there in a short amount of time, like one light language symbol can represent 2000 words or, or more that these are really highly nutritional and rich. Like sometimes I see in the grocery store, you know, superfoods that these seven transmissions are like superfoods for you to be accessing or dialing into your divine frequency. So more of what we spoke about um, earlier on and, and accessing more of your infinite, infinite self. So those are audio transmissions that you can tune into one a day for seven days or as your system is, is asking for. And then as a part of this, there's also a personalized Cosmic Source Codes, a 72-hour energy vortex that's created with the Council of Light and your higher self remotely or by distance. And um, this really supports calling in those particular cosmic light frequencies that are unique to you, those frequencies from across the multiverse that, so from this energy vortex, there's a sense of 
those particular frequencies and vibrations that are bespoke for you, really working with your system so that you're more aligned with your divine frequency. And that means your multidimensional self or your infinite, infinite self. And the energy vortex also helps complete more of these outdated ways of being. And then there's also a 75 minute divine alignment live group call with Toth and the Council of Light. And I'm really excited about that as well. So there can be transmission and then also verbal interaction, uh, question and answer and, um, and light language exchanges. And then there's also a journey with Tove to meet yourself as the embodied divine being that is a 60 minute audio recording that was recorded at a weekend with Tove in Sedona uh, with a dear friend of mine, Irene Ingalls playing the crystal bowls. And um, yeah, that's a really beautiful journey to connect with your divine self and, and deepen that relationship of how is it that you connect to your divine self, that you've had a lot of experience of connecting to yourself as your body or as your mind or as your identity and, and to really journey and develop a deeper connection to the divine self. And I think that's also what happens from developing relationships with beings of light is that it can be practiced to, to connect to ourselves as beings of light. And then as a part of the special offer, there's also a light language integration audio. So that really helps to integrate all these vibrations and there's different light codes in there that uh, can read more about, including vibrational recognition, integrating with ease and refinement, choosing from infinite possibilities, if that was also how the team you know, really wrapped it up that your choice is what's important. And then there's also a $300 divine dollars gift certificate to apply towards a toast magic Academy tuition. That's a year and a day video course that starts a uh, summer solstice. So if you're called to explore that, then there's a savings of $300 and also a subscription to the monthly energy trends with, with Toth and the Council of Light. So I was really excited to create this and created it for the Quantum Conversations uh, community. So lots of stuff in there. Oh, we thank you so much for that. That is such a high vibe package. Wonderful tools there with um, advice and suggestions and processes for us to just connect on a deeper level to ourselves it really is exquisite and again uh, those light language activations are so extraordinary so beautiful really thank you for that of course that special offer is available on this web page Oh my goodness, Danielle Hoffman, thank you. This has been really exquisite and I know we're still integrating it and, and just feeling the shift that you've led us through. It's beautiful, thank you. You're welcome, thank you. And I'm so delighted to have this multidimensional venue of, of adding the videos as well, to be seeing one another. And um, yeah, it's another dimension of, of all the, evolution and transmissions that are happening. So very fun. And very fun. And, and all those who want to step into video and who are shy, today's activation assisted us with overcoming that, transcending it too. All right. Danielle Rama Hoffman, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. With Toth and Sanat Kumara and the Tri, the Council of Light. Thank you for being here. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Namaste. Many blessings. Blessings. Mm -hmm.